Lacey Ellen Fletcher was a 36-year-old woman from Slaughter, Louisiana. She was an only child living with her parents Clay and Sheila Fletcher. The Fletchers moved into their neat two-story home around 27 years ago, where Lacey, aged nine, started to make friends with children who lived on the same road. Clay and Sheila Fletcher were well-liked and upstanding people of the community who attended a Baptist church every Sunday in nearby Zachary. Clay was an officer of the nonprofit Baton Rouge Civil War Roundtable, which was a mission to educate and foster an appreciation for the sacrifices made by all during the Civil War. Sheila worked as a police and court clerk in the small nearby city of Baker. She was an assistant to the city prosecutor in Zachary, and was also on the Slaughter's Board of Aldermen. Their daughter Lacey attended the former Brownsville Baptist Academy in Louisiana and was on the school volleyball team. However, Lacey was also autistic. At 14, her autism became more apparent, and her parents decided to homeschool her from ninth grade. It was around 1999 or the year 2000 when she was pulled out of school. A former classmate reported that Lacey was always out with friends and appeared to be a happy girl who liked fun things. But after Lacey was pulled out of school, very few people saw her day to day. One of Lacey's friends from the ninth grade spoke to the media and said, I remember her as a sweet and kind person. She was one of the first people that I was friends with when I started at that school. She was thoughtful. Just sweet is the word I keep coming back to. One of the sweetest people you could ever meet and so very kind. Lacey could be quiet but could also be vocal with her opinions. She was smart, smart as hell. But I guess the best way to put it is that she wasn't as mature as us. She still liked children's things, not teenage things. It was reported that when Lacey was around 17 or 18, she was more into Disney movies and country music. She used to invite her friends round to watch Disney movies but at 18 her friends were more into motorcycles or hanging out at the local mall. It was around this time her friends and neighbors noticed a change in Lacey and said she became more withdrawn. She stopped hanging around with her friends and they stopped coming over to her house. Lacey had last been seen by her neighbor Robert Blades when she was 21. She was exercising outside her home with small weights. Robert thought she had married and moved away. Robert Blades has a son, also named Robert, and he said, she became different. She just didn't see things the way a lot of other kids did. She was definitely different from other kids her age and I knew she was not your typical teenager. Some reports say that she had a condition known as locked-in syndrome, which is a rare disorder of the nervous system. People with locked-in syndrome are paralyzed except for the muscles that control eye movements. Conscious and can think reason but cannot move or speak, although they may be able to communicate with blinking eye movements. This was a theory that many believed upon the finding if Lacey, especially with what her parents had described. Lacey suffered from severe anxiety and had been treated by a psychologist over a three-year period in her teens. It was reported that in 2010, Lacey's parents went to the doctors without Lacey and asked for his advice. They said that she was increasingly not wanting to leave the house, not wanting to leave the sofa and was just recluse. On January the 3rd, 2022, Sheila rang 911 to report that her daughter was no longer breathing. Slaughter first responders, the fire department, and sheriff deputies showed up on scene immediately. Lacey was found dead on a 1960s-style sofa, with urine and feces all around her. Dr. Bickham attended the scene to examine the body, and he said, When I first walked into the house, it smelled of feces or fecal material, however you want to politely put it, but it stunk. When I got to the body, the individual was basically sitting in a hole, filled with liquid stool and urine. She was covered in her own feces and her emaciated body was almost melted into the couch. According to reports, Lacey had not moved from the couch for over twelve years. Apparently, her parents had left her to sit and rot on the couch and use it as her bathroom. Reports say that she had last seen a doctor two decades ago. The coroner who had done the postmortem said, The scene was sickening. I've seen some horrible things in my life, but nothing like this. I couldn't eat for a week, and I cried. It was suggested that Lacey had suffered prolonged neglect, likely for years before she died. 
The description of the scene Sheriff Jeffrey Travis encountered is very graphic. He said, I have been a sheriff for six years, and I have had a lot of things happen here in East Feliciana Parish, but this type of scene, this is by far the worst. Lacey appeared almost buried up to her shoulders in the wide and deep hole in the sofa that her bony body has worn over the years, rubbing away the cushioning. She was slumped over on her left side with her right arm across the top half of her emaciated body near her neck. She was naked apart from a small blue patterned t-shirt, which was pulled up on her chest and didn't cover her breasts. Her eyes were wide open, staring. Her mouth was also open, revealing what appeared to be a full set of front teeth. Her legs were pulled up and crossed underneath her, ironically in a way that people can make themselves comfortable. But in Lacey's case it was a posture of a bid to survive. Her face was covered in large and angry red blotches. Excrement was smeared over almost all of her body. It was matted in her hair. It was even inside her ears. There were maggots and insect bites all over her body. The brown leather sofa that served as her prison was alongside a wall with a gap of about eighteen inches, where urine pooled. Astonishingly, to the couch's right side was a gray commode and a neat pile of clothes. And to the front, only a few feet away, was a cluttered low black table. It was strewn with lotion bottles, some talcum powder, a pack of wipes, a nasal spray, a box with a lid that had a child's photo on it, and other items that make it appear the Fletchers had the resources to clean their stricken child. Between the sofa and table were two neatly stacked boxes of DVDs. Some appeared to be childlike from the covers. Desperately sad photos of Lacey taken later on a physician's steel table for a forensic examination further revealed the extent of her harrowing and so far, unexplained ordeal. She weighed just 96 pounds when discovered dead in the early hours of January the 3rd. Close-ups show the flesh on her buttocks appears to be literally worn or eaten away from the twelve years that she hadn't moved from the couch. There are large raw yellow areas where the skin has disappeared. Other back and buttock areas are so blackened it is impossible for anyone to identify what exactly they are looking at. Dr. Bickham has revealed Lacey died from severe medical neglect, which led to chronic malnutrition, acute starvation, immobility, acute ulcer formation, osteomyelitis, which is a bone infection that finally led to sepsis. During the postmortem, it was revealed that Lacey had couch foam in her stomach, feces in her nostrils, open wounds from her legs to her rear end, and her body was covered in maggots. The coroner denied the report that Lacey suffered from the neurological disorder called locked in syndrome. The coroner said, I do not know where that term came from, or what source it came from. In all my years practicing as a physician, I had never heard of that term. The only diagnosis that I knew she had was social anxiety and severe autism, and that's it. Those are her only two diagnoses. The last time it was reported that she had seen a physician of any type was when she was 16 years old. Lacey's parents when questioned said that she was intellectually sound until the end of her life. Sheila's story was that Lacey was alive at 10 p.m. just before she fell asleep in a chair and woke up at 2 a.m. to find Lacey dead on the couch. The sad thing to all of this is that Lacey was conscious for all that time. Lacey experienced her death before she died, she felt her discomfort, and likely knew she was at the end, and that is ultimately what probably hurt her the most. Despite the condition Lacey was found in, her parents were not immediately arrested. On the 3rd of May, four months after Lacey's death, both Clay and Sheila were charged with second-degree murder. They were arrested after a grand jury decided along with attorney Sam DeQuella that they should both face second-degree murder charges and not manslaughter. The grand jury were shown extensive images of the conditions of which Lacey was found. Dr. Bickham said they were so horrific and upsetting that medics were on standby for the twelve panel members. When I was presenting the case and showed the pictures and gave the timeline, the expressions of the grand jury were in utter shock, like the clock on the wall never moved again. There was complete silence. Some jurors were gasping in horror. Some were staring in disbelief. Dr. Bickham also spoke outside the court saying, evidence-wise, a minimum of twelve years Lacey was on the couch, it could be more than that. At least twelve years. A terribly long period of time. Lacey Fletcher did not deserve the way she was treated.
he agreed that Lacey's death was a crime against humanity. Sheila was released on the 4th of May after she posted $300,000 bail. Clay spent one more night in prison due to a bond delay but was released the following day. They used a bondsman, which means they had to put up 12%, which is $72,000 to cover them both. The couple's lawyer Stephen Moore said in a statement, They do not want to relive the pain of losing a child through the media. They have been through a lot of heartache over the years. Anyone who has lost a child knows what it is like. Sheila had written on her Facebook page, Mom and Dad love you so much. As of the date of this story, the trial was initially set to take place on the 6th of February, 2023. However, on the 20th of December, 2022, the expected trial date was changed to the 19th of June, 2023. If you enjoyed this video then don't forget to like and subscribe for more content just like this, and hit the bell icon, and we'll let you know every time we upload a new video. Thanks for watching.